Hi everyone, it's Ali and thanks so much for joining me back on my YouTube channel. Today I have an interactive card from you using some of the Heffy Doodle new release. This is the Perfect Day stamp set and the Fancy Foliage stencil. The new release is available for pre-orders now from the Heffy Doodle store and will be available in general stores from the 3rd of Jan. And don't forget if you pre-order you get a free stamp set so hop over to Heffy Doodle and check it out. I'm going to use my Wendy Vicky Make Art Station here to secure my stencil down. I'm using my Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink and a dirty brush which meant that I got a different colour on the outer edge of that circle but I actually really liked it. But note to self clean off your brush before you use it again. So now I'm going to stamp out my images with my Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because I want to use my Copics to colour in my images. So just stamping those down and they all stamp really cleanly and beautifully, the heavy doodle stamps. I've never had um, any uh, stamping glitches with any of my sets. And I'm going to colour in um, my stamps. I've used some BG colours, BG11, BG15, BG09 and BG49 to colour in my um, cat sort of play stand there. And... I've shown a little bit of my colouring in today. I usually um, cut a lot of the colouring just to make the videos a watchable length, but I thought you might be interested in just seeing my process here. So I usually start with the darkest uh, colour in my sequence, then go over that with my next lightest colour, and then go over that with my next lightest colour down to my lightest colour. So you generally tend to use three to four Copic colours and combine those to colour in my images. And I tend to use quite a dark colour, quite a contrast between my darkest colour and my lightest colour and try to pick a few in the middle. I use my um, Sandy Ornock hex chart a lot for my Copic colouring and picking my colours. So I would recommend that um, you can get that from Sandy Ornox um, website and it's fairly cheap but well worth it because it is such a great tool to use for Copic colours and combinations. And I've really used that ever since I started Copic colouring and I pretty much refer to it every time I have to colour in so it is really really handy if you are starting out and also you can keep track of the colours you have and I often take it to the store or look at it when I'm buying new Copic so I make sure I don't double up on colours. So now I'm using my W's to colour in the rest of the stand so W9, W7, W3 and W1 and they're warm greys and I've actually used the cool greys the C's to colour in the cats. Um, so I'm just showing you a little bit of that colouring process as I go and as I said I tend to just go over um, all of the colours with each pen and it helps them blend together that little bit. Um, so yeah that's generally my colouring process. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more detailed colouring videos and I shall try and do them. So I just decided I needed a ground sort of um, area to place my cat um, my cat stand on so I'm using pumice uh, stone color here just to go over in some of my heavy memo tape to mask off when I'd finished that I just uh, die cut and adhered my cat play stand and onto my base piece and then I'm going to cut out that bottom square carefully so that I can replace that piece later on. So I've just removed that piece and that's where my interactive element is going to happen. Just placing my cats on and deciding where I wanted them to go and adhering the ones on that I had already coloured in. And then I'm just going to show a little bit of uh, the colouring of my cat after I've adhered, adhered in on those ones. Oh, and I also cut a cat slightly and tucked him into that little um, cat stand box there so that he peeked out as well. Now I'm going to use some of the Tealicious uh, cardstock to create a card base 
absolutely adore this cardstock. This is available on the Heffy Doodle uh, shop as well. There's some fantastic colours in the cardstock available on the shop and I think you can actually now buy a multi-pack so you can have a little bit of all of the colours and try them all out. And now I'm colouring in my cat with my cool grey. So I usually start with my W9, then go over that and into a little bit more of the image with my um, C, sorry, start with my C9 and then go into a little bit more of the image with my C7 and then go into a little bit more with the C3 and C1 as well. And sometimes I even use a C00 for the very lightest colour. Um, so they're my main colours and sometimes I use a C5 to sort of bridge that gap between the very darkest grey and the lightest grey. So I just tend to go with the flow and um, see how the image looks after I've been colouring for a little while. And then generally I go in and do some dots um, in the very dark areas of the image with my darkest grey and my second darkest grey. So usually my uh, C9 and my C7, I go back and do those little dots with like you can see me doing there so then I've die cut that cat and I'm deciding how I'm going to make this slider element so I just put a strip of the delicious cardstock on the back just under that little window that I had cut out and I'm going to put some 3d foam along the bottom to act as a little guide so that that slider can slide along and I'm going to put a little tab on that slider to attach my cat to so that it can slide across and appear in that window. So happy with how that's working. I'm just going to attach my cat to that little tab sticking up now. I just press him down. I'm just going to see how far I actually want him to slide across. I don't want him to slide too far. So just flipping over to the back again, I'm just going to place a tiny little bit of foam where I want him to stop because I don't want him to go too far into that window, if you like. Then I'm just placing some more 3D foam on the back of the card to make sure it's well supported all around the edges and a little bit in the centre as well, making sure I don't get in the way of the slider mechanism. And then just peel that off. Hold it so the slider doesn't move too much. Flip it over and then attach it to my Tealicious card base. Just lining it up as carefully as possible before I press it down. And then just checking that that works correctly. Now I'm going to replace that little window of card that I cut out previously just to make it look like it's still, um, you know, the cat play um, thing is still sitting in front, if you like. And then I'm just checking that he's going to slide and he was catching a little bit, so I just used my bone folder to uh, press down that little piece so that he slid a little bit more easily. Then attaching my sentiments and my little meow word bubble onto the front of the card which I stamped in white embossed and then I've used the interactively yours stamp set to create a pull here little half circle and I'm going to put that on the end of my tab and then cut off the excess like so so that is the card it's a fairly simple interactive design and quite easy to do and very cute and lots of fun so I hope you head over to the Heffy Doodle store and check out the new release that's on pre-order now and check out the new uh, free stamp set that you get with the pre-order and I'll see you again soon.